man, I still cannot believe that you literally left America and took your family to Puerto Rico. I get it, right? I mean, you've eliminated your tax bill, but that's crazy, man. Listen, we'll talk soon. Another one bites the dust. My buddy literally last year left the country to save millions of dollars in taxes. And guess what? Biden is at it again with this whole new tax program. And you know what it's gonna do? It could literally take us to the next level of problems. We've got inflation right now. We've got war issues. And right now this tax budget cut, this literally could do us in. One, one. Turning dreams into reality. Yeah, it's one all one shot. Now the future is sure. Let's go. Oh my gosh, Jerry Norton, how we doing, brother? Good day. Dude, you live in the good tropical life out there, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Ocean, ocean view. It's great. Dude, <laughs> how long ago was it since you left America with your family for those tax breaks? May 1st, 2021. May 1st, 2021. And I know that they made some of the requirements a little bit more strict, but sounds like you're meeting all of them, right? Yeah, it's really not that bad, the changes they made. There's a few things that they did to make it a little bit more strict, but no, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, 4% total tax. Yeah, 4% instead of what, like 42% or whatever it was? So you, you eliminated 90% of your tax burden by being willing to move outside the U.S. I basically live in the Caribbean and doubled my income, essentially, without doing anything different. Yeah, yeah, you live in the Caribbean, you doubled your income, and it's working for you guys, right? I mean, you guys homeschool, you and your wife, you got this amazing family, and you guys have done a lot of world travel before. It, it, like, now that you've done it for a year, like, do you regret it, or are you really glad that you did it? You know, it's been an adjustment for my wife because there are some inconveniences, right, from being like on an island. But um, I realized I was like, I was like made for the ocean. I didn't know that. <laughs> but yeah, I absolutely love it. I love the lifestyle. I love the the pace out here. Go, we go to the beach every day. Yeah, I love it. Dude, that's that's amazing. Man, check it out. Today we're talking about why Biden's tax plan could destroy the American economy. Like. First of all, how hard would that be? You see him printing all this money in the last two years. You see what it's done to our country. You see where inflation is at. Now we've got war times. We've got, you know, post pandemic garbage going on. And right now, can it really get worse? Oh baby, trust me, it can get worse, especially with this tax plan. Have you heard of that book, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand? She was a Russian economist, wrote this novel, and it was all about this dystopian America where the government, and I'll say the Democrats, maybe even the socialists, were leaning so hard on the wealthy inventors and the creators and the revenue drivers and the business owners that they decided to up and leave America. They, Atlas, shrugged his burden and basically said, fine, let's see how you do on your own. And when all the wealthy people left, it took America down. Right now, I'm wondering if that fiction is now becoming our non-fiction reality. All right, Biden, what are you up to this time? This comes right out of Forbes with Biden's new tax program. It says, in March, President Biden proposed the billionaire minimum income tax, the BMIT, that would require the wealthiest Americans to pay at least 20% on all income. According to the White House, billionaires currently pay an average of 8.2% of their income. In other words, the government's saying, hey, you know what? We've got all these awesome, amazing tax write-offs for everyone, unless you're a billionaire. And we'll define in a moment what that means. And what that means is, at some point, you can't write things off anymore because we need that money to see if it'll help save America for our other piss poor choices. Now, I don't want you to think for a moment that I'm anti-Biden, but I am anti-stupid because when you look at what a government is, it's a big company. And the majority of companies don't know how to run profitably, which is why they fail after X number of years. Um, for the government to be run appropriately, you need someone that can figure out the most intelligent way to balance the budget. And you have to ask yourself, are we going to help our country by hurting the people that are producing its majority-wise GDP or are we gonna hurt the country by taking that? And I'm gonna tell you right now, I think that the government is going in for a huge take. Now, I also want you to get this. I don't mind paying taxes, 
my fair share. I also think that it's a great idea for us to have taxes to pay for the right kind of government programs, relief programs, and also redistributing some of the money to the people that are in need, right? But there's a capitalistic side of me that also says, okay, but if we're gonna do that, then we should also have a government that can be held accountable to make smart, wise financial choices. Show us that our tax dollars are being used appropriately, also on the right things, instead of teaching to kindergartners. AKA, the government needs to stay in its lane, right? I mean, how big of a government do we really need? Let's make sure that we are supporting the people that are also producing that tax revenue. Take care of them. In this proposed tax bill, I don't know if that's exactly what's gonna take place. I'm concerned about the unintended consequences. Let's dive in. All right, let's talk about this bill. The first thing that it does is it proposes a tax on unrealized gains. And for just a moment, I want you to think, well, what is an unrealized gain? When your house goes up in value, there is a gain. You haven't realized it because you haven't sold the house. Or if my stock portfolio or my crypto portfolio goes up in value, if I actually don't receive it, it's just a number that goes up on the balance sheet, I'm never taxed on that. Biden is now saying, hey, if you're in a certain wealth asset class, if your assets go up in value, it doesn't matter if there's been a liquidation. It doesn't even matter if you've received a financial benefit, we're still gonna tax you. Now, this is unprecedented. This is crazy. Check it out. The BMIT proposal will tax American households worth more than 100 million on earned income, but also unrealized gains. An unrealized gain results from the increase in value of a certain asset, such as stock, real estate, or other investments, even if you don't sell them. Now, this is for me, this is scary. This is why I'm talking about Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. I think for me, this is like incredibly unfair. It doesn't matter your net worth to do to anyone. Because think about this, let's just say for a moment that you have a business and that business has gone up $100 million in value. And the government says, great, we want 20% of that. Give us $20 million. But what if you didn't gain $20 million? What if you didn't receive that? What if you personally didn't get a benefit? Then how are you gonna come up with that $20 million? Is the IRS gonna come in and say, well, we saw that it went up in value. We're now forcing you to sell a part of your company, which might actually hurt it to make sure that you can pay your taxes this year on that gain. Can you imagine for a moment if you own a home, it's worth $300,000, and because of this really bizarre economy we're in, it now goes up to $400,000. And the government says, oh, you owe me 20% on that $100,000 increase. To you, you're like, I get it. On paper, my house went up $100,000 in value, and the government says, actually, we need you to send us $20,000. Well, would you have to refinance your house to do that? Would you have to sell your house to pay your taxes? Would you have to sell something else that you didn't want to sell? And does this throw a wrench in your money-making or wealth plan? This is really going to hurt people. Now, now check this one out. He's also going to do one other thing. He's also looking at charging you on unrealized gains, which means, hey, my company went up $100 million in value, or my real estate went up, or my stock, like my assets went up $100 million, and I haven't realized that money. It's on a balance sheet. It says that my net worth went up, but I don't have money in the pocket, and they want to do a 20% tax on that as well, which I don't know if historically we've ever done before. What do you think about that? I mean, taxing your equity? How can you tax somebody's equity? They haven't realized the profit yet. I insane how do you do that well I, I think people would have to sell their companies they'd have to sell their assets they may not be liquid on some of their assets i think it's literally going to blow up people's personal financial games yeah i agree i mean it's i i don't see i mean why are we doing it's it's gonna make it really difficult for, it's gonna hurt everybody because you know how it goes chris like I, i'm i'm smart enough to know how to continue to make money and make a profit so it's going to trickle down. I'm going to raise the prices on everything. Everything's just going to go up and be more expensive for everybody else. It's going to trickle down to the average person, right? You guys are literally watching my buddy, Jerry Norton, successful business owner, successful investor. He crushes it in life, but literally the government is taking half of his money away. So you know what he did? He took his family, he up and he left. And now his taxes went from well over 40% to 4%. To understand the impact of this tax bill, you have to understand our current tax bracket.
So here's what that means. You've heard of tax brackets before. It means that if you make somewhere between nothing and $10,000, you should be taxed on 10%. Now, by the way, if you make $10,000, 10% of that would be $1,000. You're not actually paying 1,000 in taxes because at that level, there's so many write-offs that most people have. You have kid tax credits that alone would cancel that out if you have children, for example. Then you have people that make between $10,000 and $40,000, and then their bracket goes up to 12%. Now, I want you to understand how this works. On the first 10,000, you're paying 10%. On the next 10 to 40,000, on that portion, you're now paying 12%. And similarly, on 40,000 to 86,000, you now jump all the way up to 22%. Well, if you go all the way down the line, when you get to the point where you're making $523,000 a year or more, then everything above that is now at a 37% tax bracket. So you're going to have a net marginal bracket that basically says, oh, if I made $600,000 this year, then some of that income would be taxed at 10%. Some of that would be at 12%, some at 22, some at 24, some at 32, some at 35, and everything above 523 was 37. So you might say, on average, if I made 600,000, I ended up paying 28% to the government. Now this is federal tax, this is not your state tax. If you live, for example, in New Jersey, and you're at the highest bracket at 37%, you're gonna be 37 to the government, you're gonna be 8% on tax, you're gonna be a total of 45%. Well, there are some people that live in some pretty hefty tax states, like California, for example. And that means that when they're in the highest tax bracket, half of every dollar they earn is going out the door. Fortunately, with some tax planning, you can buy certain types of assets or do certain type of financial moves that can reduce that taxes and put you in a lower bracket. What Biden is suggesting is that he wants to take those away. First of all, by saying, nope, you're now paying a flat 20% no matter what. You can't have write-offs below that. Oh, and by the way, if you have assets that go up in value, we're gonna tax you on those as well. Those two things might have some serious unintended consequences like I'm about to show you. So here's the really big question. Would more taxes actually solve our debt crisis. Well, this stat comes from a committee for responsible federal budget, and here's what they weigh in on say. Realistically, in order to achieve a balanced budget by the year 2025, the country would need to raise the top individual income tax bracket from 37% to 102%, which means billionaires aside, every single one of us, if we wanted to balance the budget, we would have to give 100% of all of our income to the government. Now, if you understand what I'm saying right there, that's a really terrifying number. And that's what I'm talking about. Has the government gone too far? Have we printed too much money that is now also creating this inflation, right? On top of the fact that there's war on the other side of the world and we've got inflation at that number where it's at, this is a really chaotic financial time. Think about this for just a moment. This is, Let's call this $100,000. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. There's 100 grand. Inflation is now toppling over 8%, and it's literally just a fart away from 10%. So when that happens, 10% this year, you, you literally took your 100 grand and it's worth 10,000 less this year. Next year, there's another 10. The third, the fourth year, the fifth year. After five years, guess what? You've lost half of your money. That's what the government is doing right now. So instead of solving the problem by stop printing more money, guess what they're doing? They're not just printing more money, which is creating more inflation. They're also going to us and everyone and saying, pay more taxes. And what they're doing is they're saying, you know what, let's make this easy. Let's go to the billionaires and not just tax them a straight 20%. I get it. You could argue that maybe that is a good responsible move. But charging taxes on unrealized gains that is a move that causes people like my friend Jerry to take his family and leave this country and take his business elsewhere. I love America. And I can honestly tell you that I learned it from Covey, I heard it from him, and I believe that the goose that is laying the golden egg. Is it a golden egg? Yeah, I've been laying them recently. It should be owed its taxes. And uh, even though, you know, there was a tax on tea, Boston Tea Party, a few hundred years ago, and that literally 
uh, put the country at war with England. Uh, now we've gotten to a point where we've had some of the highest tax brackets ever. In fact, most of us, I certainly don't remember, I wasn't alive, but in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, the tax bracket had times where it peaked as high as 90% at a federal level. That is so wild when you actually think about that. So what is the net impact going to be on the top producers in the country? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, there are plenty of safe havens where they can go and where they don't have these tax issues and tax problems. They can literally go to Singapore. There's offshore accounts in places. There's Puerto Rico that says, listen, as long as you live here in paradise, in these really nice multi-million dollar gated communities, I've been and I've checked them out, you know, Coronado and, uh, and some of these others, and all of a sudden, guess what? You literally are gonna drop your tax bracket from you know high 40% down to like 4%. That's crazy. Here's my fear. The rich may migrate because it's too easy for them to do. When taxes become too high, people tend to find ways to avoid them. If Biden makes the U.S. tax code unfriendly towards wealthy business owners, they may move to other nations, taking their wealth and jobs with them. And listen, if you've watched the movie Atlas Shrugged or you've read the book, and I spoiler alert, at the end, you're going to find out that the wealthy leave. And when the wealthy leave, it creates more chaos. And I think that we're encouraging more of that to happen. And just think what that'll do to the country's GDP. Think of how that hurts. So I get it. We're trying to get creative. But I think government, Mr. Biden, number one, don't release programs like this in the first place to cover up your own mistakes and messes. You've got to take on a long-minded approach. You have to look at the consequences of your actions. And you have to take care of everybody in this process. Because if you abuse the people that are driving that tax revenue in the first place at such high levels, um, you might scare them off. And that's going to hurt everybody in the end. Well, listen, should we tax the rich? You know what? I have no problem with it. They're really great producers. Let's put some tax on the rich. Just be smart about it and do it the right way. Here's some of the pros. You can increase income equality and you can potentially increase revenue for the government. But there are disadvantages. You still aren't going to be able to cover your budget issues. The economy could lose jobs and higher taxes could actually decrease revenue with having them migrate away. Bottom line is America is still technically a free country and as long as it is, I think it's very important for you and I to master this game. We have to get better at it. If someone's going to take more of this away from us, then the only responsible thing to do is to become a master of the game of money. People think that making money automatically is all about greed, materialism, consumerism, mansions, really nice cars. Hey, listen, you see me on my private jet and it's like, yeah, that must be what Chris Crone's all about. Do you know what money is really all about? It's about options. And if you want to have more options in life and you want more freedom, then you've got to get better at making this. Which is why after 20 years of learning how to grow my net worth so wildly in such short periods of time, I mean this year I'm growing my net worth hugely. And guess what? I decided to write a book, it's called Have It All. And this is a gift that I'm giving you for free. This book shares something you won't find in any other book. I share the five things that you need to invest in and why they can help you make a lot of money in a very short period of time without being get rich quick. I'm talking about real legit ways that the wealthy actually produce wealth. And you know what? We have our ways and I've decided to write a book about it. I'm giving it to you for free. I do need you in the link below cover the shipping and handling, but the actual book itself, which has just come out, it's yours. It's a gift for me to you. And I know that if you read it, it'll absolutely change your life. It's my magnum opus. I put all of the attention, effort, and energy. And if you pick it up on Audible, I spent three days recording the audiobook personally on it because I'm so passionate about this message of you understanding how to master the game of finance in your life so that no matter what next crazy thing Biden or the government or whoever comes next does, you're going to be in a better position than a worse position because you're going to have more money, which means more options. You know, my buddy Trent thought that he was going to lose his job during the pandemic, so he got very interested in a side hustle. And I said, man, you got a six-figure job. Could you replace that income in a single month with a powerful side hustle? Took him on a journey, and if you want to see exactly what happened to Trent in 30 days, check this out. Yeah. Right now, you're on track for 8,500. Correct. Okay, dude, I got to tell you, I had no idea. Like, when we sat down day one and I said, eight grand, 30 days, how's this going to go? I think my big question for you right now is, 
how do you feel about everything? How do you feel about the money that you're making and the money that's coming in compared to how you were feeling when 